thing drawing within yourself. So look, you're going to find every wrong thing that you can possibly imagine in your life. Well, I didn't do this, and I didn't accomplish this, I didn't say this, I didn't... But that's not what God wants. And finish with this one, which is another one. And then uh, we're finished. In 2 Corinthians, it says it in chapter 10, verses 4 and 5. And look what he says. And let's go to the first. He refused arguments and theories and reasonings and every power and all proud and every lofty thing that sets up the true knowledge of God. That we are led, he said, thoughts and purpose away the captive into the obedience of Christ. 2 Corinthians 10, 5. Now, so what does verse 4 say? For the weapons of our warfare are not physical, for they're mighty before to overthrow and destruction of what? Strongholds. Now, strongholds are two things. Strongholds are interior and exterior. Uh, I'm going to explain that. The Bible says that the word stronghold is pulling down a fortress. So that's one way. And then the other one is pulling down of a prison. So one is, if you have a stronghold, you have a stronghold of a fortress not allowing this to come into your heart. It is a wall. Amen. A thick as could be not allowing the Word of God to penetrate your heart. Amen. Then the other one is, which is interior, which is pulling down prisons, things that I have inside that need to what? To come out. Things that need to be, because you can be in prison. You can be full of the Holy Ghost but still be in prison. Mm -hmm. And you can still be full of the Holy Ghost and still have a fortress. Because the Word has not really penetrated you yet. We think it has. But the way that your fruits, the way the fruits that you have, if you're still beating up your wife, and if you're still screaming at your wife, and if you're still angry, that is a fruit of a prison that you have because the Word has not touched you yet. <laughs> wow. Okay? You're still in prison. You're still, what? You're locked in. Yet the word has come, but it doesn't receive, but you're still, what? In prison inside. So what he's saying is strongholds. So if we have a strong so when a fortress keeps outsiders from getting in, and the prison keeps the insiders from getting out. I don't know. I, this really has really touched me about strongholds. It's really, mm -hmm. it kind of spoken to me about what strongholds So a stronghold is a fortress and is also a prison. So if we know that that, that is true, uh, that we might have unrealistic fears of rejection. We might have unrealistic fears about the future of your marriage. We might have unrealistic fears a potential failure that will keep you from stepping out and obeying God. That's a prison and that's a fortress that is holding you back from moving. Listen, I've had to deal with that. As a pastor, my greatest fear would be that the church has completely, I've told my wife, has completely failed. And that's a fear that God is dealing with me about. And I said, God, he keeps telling me word after word after word. He keeps telling me, but I'm having this thickness of a stronghold in my life. If he's doing that, if I'm having that, I'd imagine what you're experiencing. You're experiencing the same thing as I am, and I'm just opening up myself to you. So, what are strongholds? And I'm finished with this, I promise. Uh -huh. And we're going to pray after this. It's just I want to get this all in your spirit before I leave. Keep going, Pastor. Yeah, keep going. We're not, we're not getting, <laughs> yeah, I don't know. Listen to it. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I'm trying to help y'all. I'm just trying to help y'all. Oh, okay. I believe that there are two types of strongholds. There are rational. You ever heard of a rational 
uh, stronghold, there are two, irrational. So if we have a stronghold that is irrational and rational, so what is a rational kind of a stronghold? That's your logic thinking that has really penetrated your mind. And now, because you're logically trying to figure this all out, you don't believe God can do it. That's right. Amen. Irrational stronghold is based on fears. Your fear of dying. Your fear that you're not going to be something. Your fear of that I'm not going to accomplish what God has set before me. Those are irrational. It's based on emotions. So what does the Bible say? The Bible tells you what to do. Bring every thought captive. Yeah, but there is some things that, you, on the, that we have to understand why he's saying that. Because he's saying to you, he's saying this, look what he said. To the obedience of who? Of not yourself. And I looked this up, and I want to give you this. This is so important. The obedience of Christ is it's just really in this book it said bringing a captive to every thought now Paul was saying not one thing about the devil in this verse he was saying he didn't say bring the devil into captivity he is saying bring every thought Amen. to the obedience of Christ himself Amen. now if that is made to bring into captivity now, when you get, when I, when I tell you this, it's going to be fun. Taking something into captivity is taking a spear and putting it behind someone's back. So now I have this thought. <clears throat> now I've got to, like he said, like he's saying here, must take this captive with a spear behind his back we must determine to take captivity, regardless of the opposition, we must brutally with ourselves and forcefully seize our mind. Amen. You got to go. I'm taking a spear and that, ooh, I feel the Holy Ghost, I'm telling this. I'm just, this is powerful when I got that revelation. Yep. It's taking that spear and that process that obedience you got to go I am not thinking that way anymore have you ever felt somebody put a, something in your back and you felt it was sharp are you going to move or you're going to go back you're going to move <laughs> you're going to you're going to well that's the same way that Paul is talking about this and the word thought is the vices because he said, take, that, let's read that scripture one minute. He said, bringing into captivity every thought which are what? The thoughts is what? Devices. Mm -hmm. I just told you what devices are. Is what? Thoughts that the devil keep bringing against you, mm -hmm. keeping coming against you, bringing every thought to the obedience in Jesus Christ. And the word obedience is someone forcing into submission position and making them listen to you. Amen. That's the obedience of Christ. You must say to your thought, you must come under the obedience of Jesus Christ now. And that thought of fear must go. I wear my helmet powerfully around me. If I know my salvation, now I take that obedience to Christ and you must submit under the authority of Jesus Christ. Amen. Does that make sense? Amen. That's powerful. When you really begin to really study that, see that around the church, they only say, oh, just cast down your vain man. Just that's all they say. But they don't explain it to you. And I'm trying to explain it to you to try to tell you you can take that, that spear, put it behind that, that thought, and just, you got to go. And you will take that thought yeah. 
under the obedience of Jesus Christ. Amen? Amen. Give Amen. him praise. Let's just Hallelujah. pray this. Praise and, God. This is a really... Uh, those, go ahead. Those two scriptures there, 2 Corinthians 10, 4 and 5, they correlate back to Mark 11, 23 and 24, which says, say unto the mouth and move. Amen. And it will be done. Amen. If you believe. So those scriptures kind of tie in with each other. Mm -hmm. So I just want to, could you stand up for a minute? Could you put on that music for uh, the anointed? Oh, yes. Before we do this, before we, when the Holy Spirit's here, I just want to make sure that before we leave here, that you have received Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior. That you, and that you, if you have gone away from the Lord, this is the time to make that confession. To say, God, I'm not really sure about my salvation. I'm not really sure if I've received Jesus Christ, but I come to you right now. Even if you're sure, let's just pray that. And let's just pray that together. Could you hold your hands out in front of you and say, Lord Jesus, Lord Jesus, Lord Jesus I, know I know that I want to be sure, want to be sure of my salvation. My salvation. I want to receive you in my spirit, in my mind, that you are my Lord and my Savior. Forgive me of all of my sins because I am forgiven by the blood of Jesus. Forgive me what I said yesterday, or what I did yesterday, but I ask you to forgive me. Forgive me. And I receive you, and I receive you. As, my Lord as my Lord and my Savior. And my Savior. In Jesus' name. In Jesus name. Amen. 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 So, <laughs> Amen. And let's just pray that God has not given you a spirit of fear, but of power and of love. He has given you a mind that has been delivered, rescued, salvaged, protected, and brought into a place of safe and security so that you're no longer affected by illogical and unsound and absurd, I mean, worried thoughts. Amen. Father, I receive that. Yes, Lord. And Lord, that I'm Father, saved. Father, we just today. pray that when the word of the enemy comes at us, yes. comes toward us, oh Lord, yes. that your word will rise up like a flood. Yes. yes. It will rise up in our spirits and in our yes. minds yes. to counteract the wiles of the devil. Yes. We, yes. we thank you, Lord. The wicked one is put down. Yes. In Jesus' mighty name. In Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Praise God. Amen. Good word to them. Amen. 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 Receive that in your spirit. Practice it. Practice it.